Hey guys, welcome back to the channel up here at Bauxite Ridge. I'm about to get a ride in. Uh, but first, I wanted to give you guys kind of a review uh, kind of on the GT Aggressor Pro that I've been riding uh, this year and honestly just what I've been riding in general. Just kind of the good, the bad, and honestly kind of wanting, you know, kind of giving you guys my experience if a $400 department store bike can actually handle what you actually want to do or do you think your bike's actually holding you back from getting better or do you think it's just kind of mind game and so kind of want to talk to you guys a little bit about that and but also just kind of talk about the bike as well so let's kind of get into what i got and kind of show you the bike and we'll kind of move on from there so here is the gt aggressor pro i obviously bought it stock and probably rode about uh, 60 to 80 miles on the bike stock and then from there I upgraded the tires to the Maxxis Aggressor both in the front and the back. The stock tires were 2.1 width these are 2.3 kept the same rims and so I did jump up a little bit in size but you really don't want to go more than the 2.3 if you're running the 2.1 just because then you're getting a little bit too big on the on the tires but still the stock Suntour forks coil spring that is the, actually the next investment to upgrade, and we'll talk about that more about safety more than anything. Um, also, just upgraded the handlebars uh, maybe three to four weeks ago. The stock handlebars were 640 mil wide, pretty much a straight bar. Um, these are now 760, so went up 120. Got some just chunky grips. Still the shifting brakes, still all stock. Um, kind of coming down. It is a three by eight system. So the 3x8 system is here, it's, you know, the Shimano, Acera, uh, derailleur and shifters, and then took off the, the plate here, uh, just to kind of save a little bit of weight as much, as much I could. I did, something I did notice is that the chain that came on the bike pretty much came stretched. <laughs> um, so we uh, had to upgrade the chain and we ended up replacing um, the cassette probably about 50 miles ago. Uh, just with the stretch chain, it was really putting a lot of wear on the on the cassette. So I ended up having to switch that as well. But other than that, this is essentially a stock bike, um, really aside from the tires and the handlebars. I've been loving it though. Um, it's been a lot of fun. It's a hard tail. Also with the handlebars, we also got the shorter stem. So it was a much larger stem that was on here. This is the race face effect. It's for a 35 mil width bar um, here but the uh, the stem is 40 mil uh, in the length now let me just kind of share with you my experience with this riding this bike i've put on total i think i'm right around 260 miles so far with this bike this season i average maybe eight miles a week um, and that's kind of going from the different upgrades now i've had a lot of other people say, oh man, when are you going to get a full suspension? When are you going to do this? Honestly, it's probably going to be a while. And the reason is because I don't feel that I need a higher price bike, whether it's full suspension or hardtail, to ride the trails that I want to ride. Now, I do believe that we need to upgrade this, the forks on this bike because that's more of the safety issue because these forks were not rated for even the trails that I've been doing. Um, and that's that's coming up soon. I mean, I can, I know the forks are bad, but as far as the rest of the frame, the frame is going to do what it needs to do. It is an XC geometry. However, you can still ride these trails that you're wanting to ride. You just need to work on your skills better per se. So yes, it would be more comfortable or yes, it would be an easier ride with an enduro, you know, geometry bike or with a full suspension bike or um, going out to, to Windrock with a downhill bike. I will not take this bike to Windrock, but that's because I want to enjoy Windrock. <laughs> and that's really kind of what it comes down to. But I've taken this bike on drops. I've taken it through some different rock gardens and taken it through some harder flowy trails. And like, the, because it's a hard tail, it's great on those flow trails. And actually out here at Bauxite is probably one of my favorite flow trails, even in the Chattanooga area and um, here on Murky Marsh. And we're gonna hit that up. So. You have to check out the video that's coming up for that. But honestly, it's all just in your head. It's like, stop letting your bike keep you back from improving your skills. And that's really what I wanted to talk about mostly 
is it, yeah, stop using that as an excuse because I've been able to improve greatly from using this, you know, $400 retail bike from Dick Sporting Goods. It's a GT Aggressor Pro. And, you know, number one, upgrade the tires just because that's going to keep you on the trail. But you can say that with even some of the higher end bikes that come with some cheap, uh, very thin casing uh, tires. But, you know, we've got that. And also, I didn't mention, I have the Vittoria Airliner in the back tire as well. Again, because it's a hardtail, you're putting a lot more work and a lot more pressure onto that back tire, especially going through rock gardens with flat pedals, really trying to push into those pedals to really put the weight down. So having that airliner in there um, has been fantastic. It feels a lot more uh, smoother through those, and I can run a little bit lower air pressure as well. This bike is great. There are upgrades I'm gonna do. I am gonna go to a one by system on this bike, not a one by 11 or one by 12. I don't need that or want to spend that kind of money on this bike. It'll be a one by nine, possibly one by 10, kind of depending what I can fit on my back hub currently. So it is a cassette in the back. And right now it's, it goes 11 to 34 or 11 to 32. Uh, I need to double check that for sure. But on the front, I'm gonna have a 34, 32, 34. That's where I'm getting confused which one is which, but, but then in the back, so running the nine, uh, speed cassette it'll be 11 to 40 will be kind of the range that I'm going to be running so um, I think that'll give me plenty um, plenty of room plenty of range for what I'm for what I'm riding what I'm doing and so that's really the next step so between that and the fork I'm going to be running this bike till it's broken and honestly this bike's already held up to some pretty good crashes and you know I've taken it out to um, Raccoon Mountain taking it through some of the chunky sections taking it through a lot of the rock rolls and, and drops. And really the only part that worries me is the front fork. And uh, Worldwide Cyclery, they've got um, a RockShox option that's a straight sear tube. It's 100 mil travel. Uh, both positive and negative um, is air. So upgrading from the, from the coil suspension that's on this bike. Um, yeah, I mean, I can't, I'm really happy with this bike because I actually bought this bike for right around 300 bucks because Dick's Sporting Goods was having a sale. It's normally on, like the normal price of Dick's Sporting Goods is right at 400, I think it is. And, you know, there's always deals you can get going on, you know, backcountry.com had some great deals on the, on the tires. And I've been kind of working with some other companies and other uh, video platforms to actually fund these updates on my bike as well. So it's been turning out great. I mean, the handlebars, and we actually kind of traded out with another buddy of mine uh, so talk around. I mean look at different Facebook marketplace. You can make these cheaper upgrades to improve the handling of your bike And that's really what it's about showing you guys that you don't need you know a five six thousand dollar bike or even a two thousand dollar bike to go out and enjoy the trails and have fun So that's really what kind of this is about Kind of getting into into all of this, you know a dropper post would be great um but I can, I can handle it without it, you know? And then going by the one by system, I'm gonna save a lot of weight, taking off this, taking off these extra rings, and then I can take off the whole front assembly with the, uh, with the shifter. So yeah, just excited about all of this. And it's, mountain biking has gotten, become so much fun. Getting to meet a lot of new people. Um, yeah, just learning from them. But yeah, I've noticed just from talking to different riders that I've noticed they kind of let their bike hold themselves back that, oh, I need this bike so I can do this. And honestly, guys, once you stop thinking that, your skills will improve so much more. And yes, like I said earlier, it will be a smoother ride. It will be easier to hit drops. It'll be easier to bomb down hills, but that doesn't mean you can't. You won't be the fastest, but you can still ride it. And if you're still riding it, you're still improving your skills. So that's really what matters, guys. Get out there, have some fun, enjoy the trails, enjoy the nature, meet some new people. Mountain biking community here in Chattanooga is fantastic. So always reach out to people, reach out to me on the channel, uh, leave some comments, whatever you like, but we're here to help. And really kind of from the beginning, this trail, this channel was really just to help inspire other people who've wanted to get into mountain biking, who've thought about it, but didn't want to spend two, $3,000 on a new bike, um, or even a nice used bike. And honestly, I could not be happier with, with this GT Aggressor Pro. I will be using it uh, for a long time and uh, this is a medium size frame I'm about 5'11 
I could probably go to a large, but um, I just feel more comfortable on the medium. Uh, even shortening the stem, I just feels more, I can manipulate the bike a little bit more. I just feel like I can just control the bike more and that's really what I wanted. Also, the brakes uh, still stock. I do need to replace the pads. I'm kind of, uh, I've kind of got them contaminated from some from something, but they're contaminated. Gonna get those uh, replaced here, but it's a 160 uh, mil rotor in the front and back. Basically guys, major upgrades for your bike, regardless what it is. Tires, pedals, handlebars, I think are ideal because tires are gonna keep you on the trail. Pedals are gonna keep you on your bike. And then handlebars is just to make you more comfortable on your bike. And when you're comfortable, your confidence is up. When your confidence is up, you can ride the trail so much faster and so much smoother and your skills improve that much faster. Um, and then again, forks, also very high on that list uh, as far as safety goes. So for this bike, you can ride with them, uh, but once you start getting better and start trying to get more aggressive on your bike, uh, I would definitely consider upgrading your forks. Um, you might have another bike though, and again, the forks just may not be as bottom line, <laughs> as, as poor quality as these entry-level Centaur uh, forks are but uh, that's just kind of where, where we're at. So make sure your bike's obviously safe to ride, but you don't need the most responsive shifting to ride the trails. You don't need, you know, yeah, make sure your brakes work, <laughs> you know, test them out before you get to the trails. I know that, you know, it's not always best to take a department store bike and then just walk out and hit the trails. That's what people want to do, but it's not ideal all the time. You just need to expect that. Take your bike to uh, to a bike bike shop that's there local to you guys, and just tell them, hey, I just bought this bike. Just let them know that you want to get on the trails and you just want to be safe on the trails. Ask them to check out your brakes, make sure there's nothing wrong with the pads or the cables, make sure there's nothing wrong with the shifting, and they'll do a whole good look over for you, and they'll set you up nice. You know, here in Chattanooga, I'm usually over at East Ridge Bicycles over on Ringgold Road. I live right down the street from them, so they're uh, kind of stopping there and. I've had them do some work on the bike for me as well. And you know, they're, they're good guys. I mean, most bike shops around here, even in Cleveland, Scott's Bikes, I've heard nothing but good from them. So just make sure you stop in and build a relationship with these guys and make sure you buy local. I know I got some things from Backcountry. Um, you know, they're a partnership of ours. And so I have some special deals to them. So that's why I get that. But when I need something now, when there's things that Backcountry doesn't provide, I'm running over to to East Ridge uh, Bicycles where those guys over there always help me out. So anyways, guys, keep a lookout for the next video so you can see this ride here at Boxite and uh, looking forward to it. It's a fun flow trail, murky marsh um, up here in the back. So anyways, guys, thanks for watching. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up and make sure you're sharing the video and subscribing if you're not already. Thank you guys.